Last September, it was announced that J.J. Abrams would be directing Star Wars Episode Nine, returning to conclude the story he began with The Force Awakens. And the more I thought about this, the more I realized that I had no idea what that movie was going to look like. J.J. Abrams is one of the biggest, most well-known filmmakers working today. He's made some of the biggest movies of all time and created some of the most popular TV shows of the 21st century. But compared to other directors of his generation, like Christopher Nolan, Quentin Tarantino, Sofia Coppola, it's really hard to identify what exactly a J.J. Abrams movie is. If you count episode 9, two-thirds of his movies have the word star in the title, and all but one of them are parts of giant established franchises. And he left all of his TV shows early on in their runs, Alias after two seasons and Lost after only six episodes. Everything he works on is driven by the famous mystery box storytelling, giving us questions we want answered that keep us watching. It's a storytelling principle that the conclusion determines the main idea of the story. So if Abrams never writes an ending and never tells us what's in the mystery box, what are these stories actually saying? That's what makes it so hard to figure out what he'll do with Episode Nine. He finally has to write an ending, and The Last Jedi blew up the mystery boxes he introduced in The Force Awakens, so he won't have those to use. So who is J.J. Abrams as a storyteller? What is he saying with his work? If we strip away the mystery boxes and lens flares, what is there underneath? Well, I have a theory that there's a Rosetta Stone to J.J. Abrams, a key to figuring out what his whole deal is. It's the one continuing story that he's actually seen through to the end, and the only one not driven by mystery boxes. I'm talking about the late 90s WB drama, Felicity. Yeah, the show about the curly-haired girl going to college in New York. So I'm gonna watch it all. Four seasons, 84 episodes, and hopefully by the end, I'll understand who J.J. Abrams actually is, and potentially, what he's going to do with Star Wars Episode Nine. Here we go. Dear Sally, I've been going through a strange time recently. Everything feels different. But let me back up. This all started with this crazy idea that I could figure out J.J. Abrams by watching 84 episodes of a late 90s TV show. So I did it. I watched it all. I know it's silly, but it seemed like a good idea. And now I've spent most of the past week with Felicity, Ben, Noel, Elena, Julie, Sean, Megan, and yeah, even Richard. Matt thinks it was a big waste of my time, but once I committed to it, I couldn't let myself quit. Hey. Hey. What are you watching? Oh, it's this, uh, it's this show. Um, it's stupid. Now, come on, what is it? Uh, okay, so this is gonna sound kind of crazy. Um... I'm watching 84 episodes of the show, Felicity, and the goal is that by the end I'll, I don't know, I'll, I'll learn who J.J. Abrams is. J.J. Abrams? Like the director? Yeah, yeah, I know, it's... No, no, it's, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to do or what you're talking about, but best of luck. I learned a lot about these characters, but did I learn anything about J.J. Abrams? I think so. He has writing credit on 22 episodes, and the first directing credit in his filmography is on an episode in season one. And a lot of actors that he would work with throughout his career showed up. Obviously Greg Grunberg and Kerry Russell, but also Jennifer Garner, Kevin Wiseman, and John Cho. The name Kelvin showed up here way before Star Trek. It was the dorm Felicity lived in in season one, and his obsession with Star Wars appeared repeatedly throughout the show. There's an entire B-plot in one episode with characters camping out in line for the Phantom Menace. There's an ongoing story where one character is making a documentary about his friends that almost feels like a proto-Cloverfield. And of course, that movie would be produced by Abrams and directed by Felicity co-creator Matt Reeves. 
Okay, stop, I can't keep this up. Plus, I doubt anyone watching this video has seen Felicity, so no one got this part was a Felicity parody, so let's just get back to normal. But I did learn something important about J.J. Abrams. See, the premise of Felicity is that there's this girl who had this really structured, unexciting life and thought she had the whole rest of her life planned out ahead of her. And then she bails on that to jump into this strange new world full of colorful characters where she has to figure out what kind of person she's going to become. That's also pretty much the story of Rey in The Force Awakens, which also makes it the story of Luke Skywalker in the original Star Wars. See, we all know that Abrams has always loved Star Wars, but he's pretty much used the basic premise of it for all of his work. And yeah, it's also technically the hero's journey, but with Abrams, I think it's safe to say he got it from Star Wars. And this continues through the rest of his work, characters being thrown into unfamiliar worlds, embarking on journeys of self-discovery. It happens in Alias, it clearly happens in Lost with pretty much every character. In Felicity, the title character is pulled between two paths. At first, it's whether she wants to study pre-med or art, but the primary one through the whole series is whether she wants to be with Ben or Noel. And this pull between two paths crops up again and again in Abrams' work. In Alias, Sidney Bristow is literally a double agent. In Mission Impossible 3, Ethan Hunt has to choose between a safe, happy life or sacrificing that to protect the world. In Star Trek, Kirk has to choose between independence or following the rules and being a part of the system. And in Star Wars, come on, it's the light side or the dark side. And plus, Rey has to choose between returning home to Jakku or continuing on her journey. But let's dig deeper, because I think this pull between two paths has recurred continuously in Abrams' own life. Between continuing with Alias or creating Lost, he chose Lost. Between continuing with Lost or going off to make Mission Impossible 3, he chose Mission Impossible 3. Super 8 began as two separate scripts, and instead of choosing one to make, he chose to combine them into one movie. Okay, I know what you're all wondering, what happens at the end of Felicity? Does she choose Ben or Noel? So if the conclusion of a story is its final statement, the main declaration of its theme, what can we learn from this one? Well, first I have to explain how the show begins. In the pilot, Felicity is planning to go to Stanford to study pre-med because that's the path her parents laid out for her. But then she becomes obsessed with this guy, Ben, and follows him to college in New York where she ditches pre-med to study art. And at the end of the show, she returns home to California, decides she actually does want to study pre-med and ends up with Ben. So she's exactly where she started, except this time she's making those decisions for different reasons. She chose pre-med on her own, not just because it's what her parents wanted, for her like she did four years earlier. And actually after they graduate, Ben moves to Arizona and Felicity does not want to follow him there. So he ends up coming back for her. And in the end, I guess the main idea is that the events and relationships you experience will bring you back to where you started, which is a weird conclusion for a story about a woman going on a journey of self-discovery and moving far from home. It's clear from looking at his work that Abrams is interested in stories about people at odds with their parents, in particular, their fathers. Felicity's father is always trying to control her life and her decisions, and she does not want to do what he says, and Ben hates his absent, abusive, alcoholic father, and ends up reconciling with him in the final season. And these themes continue through Alias, Lost, Star Trek, Super 8, and Star Wars. And the other main recurring Abrams theme is choosing one's own family. You know, like how Simon Pegg puts it in Spaced. Look, they say the family of the 21st century is made up of friends and not relatives. The final image in Felicity is of her celebrating with the family she made over the past four years. And this same theme recurs in Lost, Star Trek, and Star Wars. So I guess the real J.J. Abrams was the friends we made along the way. This is really inconclusive and makes me think Abrams has never really been sure what he wants to say. He loves the characters, he loves the relationships between them, he loves the journey they embark on, he just hasn't figured out where it ends. The one time he wrote an ending to a long-running story, it pretty much just wound up where it began, but a little wiser and a little more independent. The famous Abrams Mystery Box isn't just about the mysteries, it's about the stories themselves. He doesn't know where they end, and he isn't interested in where they end. Abrams has made a career out of beginning stories and leaving them up to other people to conclude. The one time he actually made a sequel to one of his own movies with Star Trek Into Darkness, he repeated Kirk's character arc from the first movie, and the film leaves off exactly where the previous one did. It doesn't actually advance the story at all. J.J. Abrams is one of his own protagonists, stuck in season two. He hasn't quite figured out who he wants to be or what he's trying to say. Looking at his work, he keeps returning to stories about young people, usually in their early to mid-twenties, just trying to figure out what kind of person they'll become. His Star Wars protagonists are pretty much the Felicity protagonists. 
Ray is Felicity, the wide-eyed, talented young woman who enters a new world to find herself. Kylo Ren is Ben. I mean, I know his name is Ben, but I mean Ben from Felicity. The brooding, angry young guy with serious father issues. And Finn is Noel, the upbeat friend who pretty much figures out his path the soonest. So what does this mean for Star Wars Episode Nine? I don't know. Uh... Rey returns home to Jakku, but now she knows some Jedi stuff and has some nice new friends in the Resistance. Kylo Ren reconciles with his father, but he can't because his father's dead and quits the First Order to study pre-med. This could actually be a defining moment for Abrams. He's in a position he hasn't been in since 2002 to end a long-running story. And now, in one of the most anticipated films in the history of cinema, the time has come to put his cards on the table, to lay it on the line, and actually say something. Not just that friends are good and mysteries are fun, but write an ending that communicates an actual idea. I really hope he does it. Abrams is a talented guy who is astoundingly good at beginning stories. So now it's time to prove that he's more than just that. So that's what I got out of watching 84 episodes of a show that J.J. Abrams isn't really sure what he's saying, and that there is no core idea at the heart of his work. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I, I kinda enjoyed Felicity, but I wish I could get that week of my life back. But what if I can? So I didn't talk about this before, but the way Felicity actually ends, the last five episodes, there's this time travel storyline, and I'm not kidding here. The entire show has been based totally in reality until then, and then, in the last five episodes, through a magic spell, Felicity travels back in time several years to see what would have happened if she chose Noel instead of Ben. And granted, it does just end up in the same place anyway, but... What if, what if that's the lesson here? What if that's what, why I did all this, to learn that I actually can? go back, change the past, and, I don't know, have a more productive past week where, I, I don't know, I just made a different video. Maybe I watched, I finally watched Deadwood instead. Let's see. Matt. What? What day is it? The second, March 2nd. I did it. I did it. Did what? I traveled back in time a week to before I watched 84 Hours of Felicity, trying to figure out who J.J. Abrams is and what he's going to do with Star Wars Episode Nine. because I didn't really learn anything and that was a big waste of time. Uh-huh. But wait, maybe that was the lesson. You can fix past mistakes, but then you pretty much end up back where you started. Isn't that what happened with Nero and Star Trek? And wait, was there time travel in Alias? I don't think so. Maybe after Abrams left? So wait, is that the lesson about Star Wars Episode Nine? That there's gonna be time travel? Will Kylo Ren travel back in time and save Han Solo, but then discover that he has to go back to the original timeline? I feel like I might be losing the thread here. P-Board Solo, J.J. Abrams! Hello guys, thank you for watching. If you've made it this far, then you've pretty much seen the whole video. I'm back from my traveling and getting back to the regular video schedule now. And if you're wondering, yes, I really did watch all 84 episodes of Felicity for this video. Was it necessary? Probably not, but I did it anyway. So if you like these videos that we're making and you want to help us make more of them, you should check out the Patreon. If you want to yell at me about stuff and get updates on the things that we're working on, follow me on all the social media links. I'll see you next Wednesday.